Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome uh, to our service this morning. Pentecostals of El Dorado, I'm Pastor James Fout. We're glad you're here. Uh, we had a last minute decision that I know has caught some of our people off guard, and that is the weather changed overnight. And so we have chosen to come here and have our service outside with Park and Praise. And there's some that are gathered, and maybe a few more will come in. Um, uh, but we are very happy. It's hard sometimes to guess the weather. I, I really believe what someone told me when we first moved here, and that is we live in South Arkansas, and the weather could change at any minute. And that's just true. So, um, but we're glad that you're here today. And wherever you are, let's just determine today to worship the Lord in spirit and truth, to lift him up whether it's here in the parking lot or at home on your couch, wherever you might be. Uh, I just want to encourage you to put everything aside, uh, bring every thought captive, focus on the Lord today, uh, focus on getting our hearts and our minds on him and praising him. That's why we're here. Uh, so let's let God move wherever we are today. Uh, we're going to worship the Lord in song and in the word. And let's just pray together. Jesus, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for those that are gathering via Facebook and in the parking lot. I just pray that you'd meet us today. You'd bless today and help us. God, we know you have a word for us. We know, God, that wherever we are, you're there too. And we're going to lift you up. We're going to magnify you. We're going to praise you today because you're worthy. And we just ask you to help us and speak to us, encourage us and empower us in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you clap your hands to the Lord today and let's lift him up in Jesus' name. I'm not holding anything 
anything, I will worship you with all that I am. I'm not ashamed to worship the name of Jesus, Jesus. I'm not ashamed to shout. desire today to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Put your hands together. Give Jesus praise one more time. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. So very, very thankful. Uh, hallelujah for what God is doing. The privilege of worshiping him. Uh, that nothing can hinder that. Nothing can stop that. We worship him at home. We worship him in the parking lot, uh, in the car, wherever you are today. He is worthy to be praised and appreciate you joining us today. Uh, again, sorry for miscommunicating. It's just in my heart to be here. I was really disappointed. I was talking to Olivia yesterday, uh, late last night, about I uh, just wish we could do it. And, um, I know it caught a bunch of people, but uh, I figured those that could make it are here and you're with us. And you still got time to drive in if you live close. You can still make it. I'm probably going to preach more than five minutes today. And so, uh, anyway, uh, but we're excited about what God is doing. And uh, we want to pray. Uh, of course, I pray weekly. Uh, or daily, really, for, for each and every one. But uh, let's just pray. I have heard in talking to people, there's some that have some, some health issues and things going on. There are some that have some financial uh, needs in their lives and, uh, you know, with all this going on. So let's continue to lift up our families. Let's continue to pray for them. Uh, uh, dear friends to this church and to us, our family individually, uh, the Doyles uh, have CODID. Uh, he is need, in need of a miracle. They both are, um, but especially Brother David today, we need to lift him up, uh, Doyle and uh, Sister Carolyn. Uh, we're praying for them. Uh, let's continue to pray protection uh, over our families, over our health, our welfare, our jobs. I, I'm thankful for God's protection. I've really watched as all of this has gone on. I have seen personally and in testimonies from others, I have seen God's hand of protection. And I really do believe that he, he protects. His blood really does cover. And I'm thankful today for that. So let's just continue to pray for those. Let's pray together today. Lord, we love you. We come together as a church family right now and we pray for our families. We pray for those today that have uh, health concerns and issues. And we ask you, Lord, today to let healing virtue flow. We pray for those that are facing financial difficulties, God, that you would supply all of their need. God, that you would provide a miracle in the middle of this situation. We lift up the Doyles today, brother, sister Doyle. We rebuke this virus in Jesus' name. We know you're greater than that. And we pray that you would strengthen his lungs and touch them today. God, and all that are affected by it, Lord. We just ask you, God, for mercy with this. We ask you, God, to, to heal our land of it. We ask you to continue to protect and keep uh, barriers around us. And God, help us. We, we pray, God, that you would strengthen our families and protect them. Those that are go out on the jobs, Lord, protect them as they're out there and, and keep your hand on them. We love you today, and I thank you for the privilege of prayer. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I will let you know that tonight we will have uh, Facebook Live 
Um, that'll be from my house. It'll be thoughts uh, that I've been thinking about. Uh, today, I'm going to do my best to encourage everyone that's listening to me. Tonight, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, transparent about what's on my heart and speak to the church. Of course, it's to everybody that would want to pay attention, but it'll be just kind of like I have done the last couple of Sunday nights from my house, more relaxed. Um, but uh, definitely there's a challenge in my heart for all of us that I think we need to uh, hear. So I invite you back uh, tonight and 630 and then Wednesdays at 7 uh, we have our service here so we invite you to that um, we have been doing family game nights uh, via uh, online video uh, conferencing and uh, for a church family you like information about that send me a text send me your email and then when we do that on Friday I'll send that out to you and if you want to join us at 7 o'clock you can uh, we've been playing games like categories and uh, boggle and catchphrase and different things. So hey, we've had a lot of fun. It's been a good time together and, um, and we encourage you to join us. It's important that we stay connected. It's important that we continue to fellowship and reach out. I thank you for that. I know many people have been doing that and I appreciate you doing that today. Hallelujah. Uh, we've gathered today uh, and that's all my announcements. We've, uh, and of course, it, 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 please continue to give as the Lord puts on your heart as you give faithfully and honor him and your substance. Uh, you can do that first via the Pentecostals of El Dorado website. Go to the bottom. There's a little button that says Give Now, and you can do that safely and securely, and the Lord will bless you as you give to Him. Hallelujah. And so we appreciate that. Um, but we're just going to uh, sing one more song and worship the Lord, lift Him up, and give the Word of God today. Again, thank you for joining us. Um, hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord. I'm thankful to be here. It's encouraging to see some out in the parking lot today. It does encourage this pastor, and it's just good to see you. And um, again, I apologize for those that didn't get the last minute word, and uh, not my intent to leave anyone out. It's just uh, I thought, well, if we could do it, let's do it. So God bless you today. But wherever you are, I hope you're ready for the word of God. Let's lift up Jesus one more time and, and exalt him because he is worthy. Jesus.
Anybody feel his presence today? Let's put our hands together one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thankful for the presence of the Lord. Amen. Thankful for what I feel in the house of the Lord, <laughs> in the parking lot. Hallelujah. And um, so thankful that you've joined us via Facebook Live today. And um, just keep commenting in there. Those comments, we go back and read them. Some are watching them now. We're responding. But uh, that's a great way to interact in the service today. Uh, I don't think any of us need to uh, be reminded that we are living in unprecedented times. I know there have been times in our history, actually, where there have been viruses and epidemics and things like that. But we are doing some things different today and in this day that uh, we haven't had to do before. They are uh, things that are causing us to become more creative, but I firmly believe that God remains the same. He remains the same. Hebrews is correct. It's Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. You know, you look through history and you see that Israel struggled. Uh, they struggled in uncertain times. When faced with various things, they would murmur or look backwards or look to other gods for help. And yet God was faithful to them. The church that we are thankful to be a part of today was born in persecution. But they counted themselves worthy to suffer for his name. And in the middle of that persecution and that pressure, they saw a great revival. Amen? It was fueled by their persecution. Throughout history, God remains the same. His desire is the same. And I believe his desire has always been for his creation to serve, follow, and trust him. In persecution, in trial, in, in peril, and in, in difficult times, and yes, in uncharted waters. When the people demanded a king because they wanted to be like everybody else. God gave them Saul. But when Saul disobeyed, the Bible said the Lord sought for himself a man after his own heart. A man who had the correct heart. He wasn't worried about the blood pumpy muscle. He was talking about the heart, the mind, the will, the, the, the uh, emotions, the mindset of a man. That, that the man's heart, his mind, his thinking, his emotions, it would be about God. A heart that desired God. A heart that desired a relationship with him. Acts 13 and 22 said, when he had removed him, speaking of the Lord, he, the Lord, raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David. The Lord said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. The Lord found David. The Lord found him. Aren't you glad he found you? Because the Lord saw David's heart. The Lord saw what was in his heart. His heart was after God. 
It had a desire to know God, to draw close to God. That was in his heart, and I believe that's in our heart today. The Lord knew David would fulfill all of his will. He knew in David's heart was a desire to, to serve him and to follow his will and not his own fleshly desires. David encountered many things, but through those things, his heart's desire was seen. His psalms, his stories, they demonstrate a heart for God, a heart that wants to worship, serve, and follow his God. His songs depict his desire to dwell close to God. That was in David's heart. I believe that's in your heart. That's in my heart today. Uh, perhaps one of the uh, most familiar psalm when it comes to that is Psalms 91, verse 1 and 2. David said, he that dwelleth. He that lives, he that dwells, he that abides in the secret place, that special place, tucked alone and away from everything else, that secret place of the most. He that dwells there. Come on, anybody dwelling in a secret place? Anybody finding a secret place? Are you getting alone in your prayer closet, alone with God, and, and reaching out? God touching you during these uncharted waters? Hallelujah. He said, he, that man, that person, would abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He, David, said, I will say of the Lord. My testimony of the Lord is this. He is my refuge. He's that place of shelter. He's that place of safety. He's that place I can go. And he's not only my refuge, but he is my fortress. He's my God. And in him will I trust. That's David's testimony. He said he was his refuge. He was his fortress. He was his God, not somebody else's, his God. And in his God did he trust. Notice I will, or notice it is will I trust. Will I trust. Speaks of present, yes, but also of future. He's saying I'm going to trust him in uncertain times. I'm going to trust him in uncharted waters. Uh, I'm going to trust him when things are going my way. And I'm going to trust him when they're throwing stones at me. I'm going to put my trust in him because he's my God. Yes. Amen. Amen. David saw his God as many things. A strong tower, his refuge, his strength. But today I want to focus on the fact that David said that the Lord is my rock. He's my rock. He is my rock. David depicted God as his rock in many different types of waters, circumstances, and trials that he would face. In Psalm 71 and 3, David declares... Be thou my strong habitation. Be my strong habitation. Whereunto I may continually resort. Be my strong habitation. My strong dwelling place. Where I can continually resort. Where I can continually come to you. For thou art my rock. Thou art my rock and my fortress. If you looked in the dictionary today, you'd find a lot of definitions for a rock. One of them would be a firm, uh, a, a, a hard mass of consolidated mineral or matter. And another one is a firm foundation or support. A rock can be a firm foundation, support, something you can stand on, something that will hold your weight. David said, the Lord is my rock. We are living in uncertain times. We are facing uncharted waters. But this thing, the one thing I know, the Lord is my rock. He is my support. He is my foundation. I want to talk to you a little bit under this title today. 
our rock in uncharted waters. Our rock in uncharted waters. We're in a place we've never been. There's those waters are all around us. Uh, we're facing things we never had to face before. We're facing trials. Some of you are going through some personal things and facing things in, in your body and in your families and in your finances and, and all the things going on and all that is swirling around you. But I want to remind you today, David said, and I declare the Lord is my rock. He's my firm support. He's my foundation. I can, I, I could get off and drift if I want to, but then these waters would catch me. No, I'm going to stay on the rock. He is my rock. I just want to encourage somebody today that the Lord is our rock in uncharted waters. Oh, hallelujah. Would you put your hands together today, whether in your living room or car, wherever you are, come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Wednesday, I spoke about the wise man who built his house on the rock. The rock was the foundation, the support for the wise man's house, especially during the storms, especially during the storms. The rock supported the house during heavy winds and heavy rains. David said, the Lord is my rock. He's the one that supports me. When life rains down unexpectedly upon me, storms of life, difficult circumstances, these uncharted waters, they can be overwhelming. But David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, just lead me back to the rock. Lead me to the support system. Lead me to my God that holds me. Sustain. I'm not going to wander out there knowing my heart's overwhelmed. You just lead me back to the one who holds me and supports me. He said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from my enemy. If you're overwhelmed today about what we're facing, what we're experiencing, the trials, the tribulations, the, the things you may personally be facing, the uncharted waters, uh, that I want to encourage you today. Find a rock. Find the rock rock. Come on. He's going to support you. He's going to shelter you. He will hold you in those times. You know, the thing about storms and uncharted waters, when those things come, you got to find shelter and you got to find something that will support you and hold you. You, you got to find something that you can stand upon, something that you can shelter yourself in. And then you got to stay there while the storm rages. Think about it. We had some storms last night. Hopefully everybody was sheltered in their house. You didn't wander out in it uh, because there were storms. Later on today, there's going to be thunderstorms all afternoon. Hallelujah. Thank God for this clearing. Amen. But you, you're, there, there's going to be storms. And you're not going to wander out in that stuff unless something you have to. But otherwise, what are you going to do? You're going to stay in the shelter. So when, when storms of life fall, what do you... I'm going to find the rock. I'm going to stand on the rock. And I'm going to wait for him to come and help me. I'm going to wait for him to give me direction on which way I should chart my path. I'm going to wait for him to speak a word to me. I'm not going to wander off the rock because the rock is where I go. The, the rock is my foundation, my support in the middle of my storm. I'm going to stand on the rock during these times. And I'm not going anywhere. See, church, sometimes we want to move too quick. We want to walk too quick. We want to get off too quick. But, all, but what we need to do is what David said. We need to wait upon God. Yeah. Psalm 62 and 1, David said, Truly or surely, my soul waits upon God. <clears throat> it waits upon Him. From Him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock. That's how David said it. That's how King James wrote it. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. And I shall not be greatly moved. David said, I'm waiting on my God, my Savior, my Deliverer. 
He only, He alone is my rock, my salvation, my defender. He's my defense, my rock that defends me. That's why I said, I'm not going anywhere, David said. I, I'm going to stay on the rock. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait from the rock. I'm going to wait upon God to defend me, to support me, to hold me. During these uncharted waters, these storms, these trials, can I remind somebody, God is our only hope. He's the only real rock and the only real support we have. He defends us. He supports us. And we must echo David's words, his heart's desire that says, I shall not greatly be moved. I'm not going anywhere. Hallelujah. He, that's why David said, I'm not moving from my only rock. Verse 5, he would say, my soul, wait thou upon soul. Wait, don't leave. Wait upon God. My expectation is from him. I'm waiting upon God. I'm expecting him to defend me. I'm believing he's going to support me. Verse 6, he only is my rock. He only is my salvation, my defense, and I shall not be moved. Notice David's resolve was I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay. I'm not moving. My rock, my God, I expect him. My expectation is that I expect him to, I'm waiting on him because I expect him to come help me. I'm waiting. I'm not getting out on my own. I'm not trusting in my own power. I'm not trying to do it. I'm waiting on him because I'm expecting him to come and help. He's going to support me while I wait. And then when he comes, he's going to lead me through. Oh, hallelujah. But I gotta wait on him. I gotta trust in him. I can't let this flesh get anxious. I can't let the overwhelming feelings of emotion cause me to get off the rock. No, he is my rock. He is my foundation. He can hold me. And he can hold you. He said in verse 7, in God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength. He's the rock of my strength. Where does my strength come from? My rock. Where does my strength come? It comes from the rock. He's my refuge. It's in God. Verse 8, trust him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Seal us, stop, ponder, meditate on that. In these uncharted waters, let's declare with David, he is my rock. I will trust him at all times. With, with the things that uh, we do, and the things that we do not understand. I'm going to trust him. He's my rock. I may understand it and I may not. I may know what's going on and I may not. But what I know is I'm going to wait upon him. What I know is I'm going to trust him. He only is my rock. I know it's difficult to wait patiently on him. I know it's difficult not to get, give in to this flesh and let it drive you somewhere. But he's my rock. He's my support. He's my only support system, David said. So if I get off the rock, if I leave that and try to do it on my own, I'm out there where I have no support. See, the difficult part of trusting him is waiting patiently for him. And with everything that's going on, all that we do and do not understand, we must continue to stand on the rock, on the Lord, who is our rock in uncharted waters. It requires faith and complete trust in, in what you're standing or building on. If he's my rock, then I'm standing on this rock because I trust and I believe that this rock can hold me. You notice today I did not get a little pebble. You notice today I didn't get a little thin rock. You notice I got something I knew was good. I, I trusted. I believe this is going to hold me. I see, I know it is, right? I, it it doesn't matter what, it's going to hold me. I have complete faith and trust that while I'm jumping and moving and you might be nervous, I'm not nervous because I trust and believe this rock is going to hold me. It's going to hold me. Doesn't matter what's going on around me, it's gonna hold me. Doesn't matter the wind, the storm, it doesn't matter what the, the, the things that people are saying, it doesn't matter the, the fear and all that that's blowing around me. This rock is gonna hold me. I have complete trust. I completely believe. And if that's true about this rock, it is so much more true about the rock. Yeah. I, in these uncharted waters, I trust he's holding us. Yes. 
I trust He's holding us. I trust He's sustaining us. We got to wait patiently for Him. We got to trust. We can't move off the rock. We just got to keep our relationship with Him. See, because the important thing that while we're patiently waiting for Him, the important thing is that we have complete trust and faith in our rock, in our God's ability to support us. We must firmly believe right now and trust that God is able, that he's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. Ephesians 3.20. Psalms 40 and 1 and 2. I waited patiently for the Lord. The Lord, uh, he inclined unto me and he heard my cry. David testified and he said he waited patiently for the Lord. He just stayed. He waited. He didn't go anywhere. <clears throat> but he cried out to the Lord and the Lord heard his cry, his prayer. Would you just stop and consider for a minute? You might know what the next verse is, but before jumping ahead, uh, just stop and consider. Where was David crying from? Where was he crying from? It was certainly an unexpected place. I'm sure he didn't expect to be where he was. But he waited patiently for the Lord because he trusted him to support him, to hold him, and eventually deliver him. Where was he? Verse 2 said, he brought me up also out. I like that. Up also out. He brought me up and also he brought me out. Of what? A horrible, not just a pit, a horrible pit. He said he delivered me from a horrible pit. But he's stuck in a horrible pit of sin. Come on, a, a horrible pit. Some situation, come on. He, he said, he delivered me from it. He said, S somebody today may have fallen unexpectedly in, an un in a horrible pit, in a horrible situation, in a horrible trial. But trust in our only rock during these unexpected waters, uh, these unexpected trials. He will bring us up also out of that horrible pit. He will also bring up and also out of the miry clay. I think of that red, sticky, southern clay. That clay you find around that sticky stuff. During these sticky, unexpected situations, somebody might feel stuck in today. I want you to know the Lord will defend us. He will bring us up and out of the miry clay. And when he does that, he said he's going to bring me up. And he will set our feet upon a rock. He's going to bring me out of that sticky situation, that sticky clay. He's going to bring me out of that horrible situation, that horrible. And where's he going to put me? On a rock. He's not putting me back in the clay. He's not putting me in another sticky situation. Where He's going to put me on the rock. He's going to put me on something that will hold me, support me. He will establish our goings. He will have us literally standing upright is what that means. It, David was saying that he will establish or he will make sure that we can stand firm in our goings. Uh, I was thinking about this horrible pit and this my, miry clay. And it tells me that David felt like he was sinking. Anybody feel like they're sinking? Anybody ever felt like you were sinking? That means you felt like you were on unsupported ground. Even though we say we're building our house on the rock. Sometimes we, we let things get ahead and we kind of slip off and we feel like we're sinking. Why do we feel like we're sinking? Because we've allowed our trust and our faith to take us. So we, we are all of a sudden finding ourselves feeling like we're sinking because we're not on the rock. We're not on what's supporting us. Somebody needs to climb back up on the rock today. Somebody needs to replace their fear with faith and get back up on the rock. Christ Jesus today. Somebody needs to stand firmly and let him support you during these uncharted waters. Come on, somebody might feel like their, their relationship has been sinking. Their hope has been sinking. Come on, I'm encouraging you to get back on the rock. He is our rock in these uncharted waters. Don't allow what you're feeling to cause you to sink. Declare like David, he is my rock. It's on the rock that he establishes my going. He supports and keeps us. I just want you to know there's hope today. When we feel like we're sinking in trouble.
concerned about uncharted waters or unexpected seasons. Do not be silent. Cry out to him. Pray and seek him. That's what David said in Psalms 28 and 1. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. You're my rock and I'm going to cry. I'm not going to stay silent. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep seeking. I'm going to keep crying, uh, crying out. Why? Because David understood. He said, be not silent to me. Lest if thou be silent to me, I will become like them that go down into the pit. David said, I'm crying out to my rock, my support. But if you don't help me, if you remain silent, I feel like I'm going to sink. I'm going to go down in the pit. I'm crying out to you because I know you are my rock. I know you are my support. I know you're the one that will keep me from sinking. Notice he explains in verse 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield, my rock and my, my protector, my, the one that empowers me. He said, my heart trusteth in him and I am helped. I put my trust in him and he helps me. He's trustworthy. I place my trust in him and he helps me. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoice and my song will I praise him. Why? Because he is worthy of our praise. The thing that encourages me about David the most is he, a man after God's own heart is that he was not perfect and God didn't hold that against him. He had flaws, he made mistakes, but in his heart, you always see him going back to God. You see him pouring out his heart to God. In, in Psalms 42, the imperfection of David is seen in David's question. In Psalms 42 and 9 through 11, he says, I will say unto God my rock. I'm crying out to him. This is what I'm saying to the one that's my rock and support. Why have you forgotten me? What? What? David is talking to his rock, his foundation, and he's crying out because he's not perfect. He's saying, why have you forgotten me? Why go I a mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? I'm sad, I'm depressed, I'm discouraged. My enemy uh, is oppressing me, and that makes me feel like you've forgotten me. In these uncharted waters, perhaps someone has felt that way. Can I remind you? Just stay on the rock. Don't go wait patiently for him. Come on, he hasn't forgotten you, and he's working. Even when it seems like he's silent, he's still working. He's still supporting you. He's still strengthening you. Because notice that, that David comes to himself. He speaks sense to himself in verse 11. He says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Soul, why are you disquieted within me? Self, soul, why are you discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? And then notice as he focuses on the rock, he says, hope thou in God. Soul, why are you sad? You should hope in God. Soul, why are you disquieted? Hope in God. Put your hope, put your faith, put your trust in your God, in your rock, in your support. That's why he goes on to say, I will yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. You know, rocks aren't just about defense. They can be used in offense. David took five smooth stones, five rocks, and defeated a Goliath, a giant in Goliath. God is our rock. And not only does he defend and support us, but he fights for us. In your uncharted waters, God, there may be a giant that's revealed, but our rock is not only going to defend you from the giant, the, our rock is going to deliver you from the giant. Giant-sized fear, giant-sized worry, giant-sized giant-sized bills, gi whatever. He will defend you, yes, he will. and he will deliver you. If you will just stay upon him and trust in him, he is our rock. Amen. That's what he said. Psalms 18 and 2 and 3. The Lord is my rock. He's my fortress and my deliverer in whom I will trust. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. And in calling upon him, so shall I be saved from my enemy. I'm just going to call. And he's going to save me. He's not only going to deliver me but he's going to fight for me. I will trust him. I will call upon him. And so shall I be saved from my enemies. He's, oh, hallelujah. He's worthy. In these uncharted waters during this difficult season, the question is, are you trusting him to be your salvation, to defend and deliver you? Is he your rock today? Are you standing on him today? Or have you allowed these waters to get you off your foundation? I'm just trying to encourage somebody. 
Come on, come on back to the rock. Make sure your feet are planted on the rock. He is your support. If you've allowed something to drift you away from the rock that gives you support and strength, that defends and delivers you, I'm encouraging someone, make your way back to the feet. Make your way back to the rock. Get your feet firmly back on the rock today. If you got to repent, repent. It, 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 whatever it is you need today. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, call me. I'd be happy to do it. If you never received the Holy Ghost, seek God for the Holy Ghost in your home. He can fill you in your very house today because that's His promise. Wherever you are today, backslidden heart, Luke cold warm, get back on the rock. I'm trying to encourage you today. He is our rock in these uncharted waters. He's the only one that's good. Oh, I'm glad for stimulus. I'm glad for all this stuff that's going on. But that stuff is not where my faith or my trust is in. My faith, my trust has always been, it's going to be firmly planted on the rock, the one that supports me, the one I'm building my house upon. I'm not building it on seeking sand. I'm not building on something that shifts and sinks. I'm building it on the rock. The longer I've walked with him, the less I feel like I've drifted, the more he helps me to stay. I noticed something. I end with this today about a well-known passage of Scripture. Matthew 16 and 18 says, and I say, this is Jesus, I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. First notice, it's the rock is revelation. That's right. It's revelation. It's not a phys It's the revelation of who Jesus was yeah. and is. That's what brought about Jesus' response to Peter. That's why he says, thou art Peter. Because it is on the rock of revelation that he would build. See, the more God reveals to us in our relationship, the more truth we come to know. Because he is truth. His word is truth. The stronger we become in him and the less likely we are because we're getting to know more truth. More is being revealed. You, you get in, a, in the Bible and all of a sudden you read something and it comes alive in your heart and it strengthens you. It helps you. Why? Because the more you read that book, which I said, the Bible said the word is truth. The more you get into it, the more truth you get, the more revelation in you, the stronger you and I become. Yes, yes, if you look at that Greek word for Peter, it's Petros. It means stone. It's a large stone, a piece, a fragment, a rock, such as a man might throw. But you look at the word rock, it's Petra. You look at that definition, it's a projecting rock, a cliff, huge like Gibraltar. Jesus said, you are a rock, Peter, and I can throw. The rock of revelation, the truth, you are a huge, but, but that revelation, that rock of truth is a huge rock like Gibraltar. Come on, get it in your mind today. Thou art Peter. You're a rock. I'm going to use you. I'm going to move you around. But I'm going to build my church on what was revealed to you, on the truth yeah. revealed to you about who I am. And that rock you can't move. That rock stands firm. It's huge like Gibraltar. It's a huge rock or cleft that's not moving. You don't throw Gibraltar. You stand on Gibraltar. You stand on that rock of truth. You stand on that revelation. You stand on that understanding and knowledge and belief that God is my rock. He's not a pebble that I throw. He's not a stone that I cast. He's Gibraltar. He's a rock that's fixed and not going anywhere. That's why the wise man built his house on a rock, a foundation that can't be thrown. Jesus said upon this rock, Gibraltar, this revelation, I will build my church. Here's, here's the last word. Stop seeing yourself as a pebble being kicked around. You are part of the church. If you've been born of water and spirit, the way John 3, 3 and 3, 5 says, if you've done what Peter said when he preached the first message, repented of your sin, been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or removal of those sins, and received the precious gift of the Holy Ghost that's still being poured out today, if you've done that in obedience to the word of God, then you are a part of the church. You're part of his bride, his child. And Jesus said to Peter, I'm building my church. 
not on a pebble. I'm building it on Gibraltar. I'm building it on something that won't move. And if we just continue to stand on the one that is our rock, he'll use us as he supports us. Peter said, I'm building my church. Or, or Jesus said to Peter, I'm building my church. The one I gave you the keys, the one you're going to preach the first message to in Acts chapter 2 on the birthday of the, the church, which is the day of, day of Pentecost said, I'm going to build my church, Peter, on Gibraltar, on Revelation, on the truth of who I am. And hell can't stop it. It can't prevail against it. Jesus said, come on, if you stay on that rock, that's the rock I'm building my church on. Come on, church, if we're part of it, then we better be on the rock. If we're part of his church, we better stay on the rock. If we're his bride, we better stay on the rock. If we're his child, we better stay on the rock. It's not time to run. It's not time to let uncharted waters derail us or cause us to keep your faith and trust in him. He is our only rock. He's Gibraltar. He's not moving. He's not going anywhere. So are you standing firmly on the rock? If not, why don't you find your way back? And if you are, why don't you lift your hands and thank him? Why don't you just tell him today, Jesus, I thank you for a revelation of who you are. And I'm standing on that rock of revelation. I'm standing on the truth of your word. I'm obeying your word. I'm applying your word. I'm going to live your word. It's going to abide in me. Lord, I love you today. I thank you for revelation. I thank you for truth today. I thank you, Lord, for being our rock in uncharted waters. Oh, come on, lift your hands, somebody. Come on, just praise him for a moment. Wherever you are, why don't you just thank him? Come on, take your living room and make it an altar. Why don't you just tell him, Lord, I thank you for being my rock. I thank you. Thank you for being my support system. I thank you for holding me and supporting me during these uncharted waters. I thank you, Lord. You've never left me. You've never forsaken me. God, I'm not going anywhere. You are my only rock. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm so grateful to know him as my rock. I'm so thankful. Know him as my support. Uh, come on, there have been times in my life where the only reason I was able to stand and make it through the storm was because he was giving me the strength to do it. It's not by might and it's not by power. It's by his spirit. It's not of my own ability. I can't. Paul said, yes, when you've done all the stand, stand. But he's talking about standing in the power of the Lord, standing upon his word, standing in what brings us real strength. I'm praying for somebody today. I'm praying for some backslider today. Make your way back to the only rock. Come on, I am praying for, I'm pleading for somebody today. Make your way back to the rock. So, so why are you disquieted? So why are you sad? Why are you depressed? Come on, I'm going back. Hope thou in the Lord. My hope is in the Lord. That's what David said. Lord, I felt like you forgot me, but then I remembered my hope was in you, and I remember you didn't go anywhere, and I'm just going to wait patiently for you, and I'm just going to trust you, because where am I going to go? You are my only rock. Huh. Jesus, we love you today. We thank you. God, I thank you for what I feel. I believe you're moving in homes right now. You're touching lives right now. God, I wish I could have an altar call here, but God, I know you're doing an altar call there. And whoever's hearing it right now, God, and as they go through their day, I pray, God, that you give them strength, that they would hope in you and trust you as their rock, their support. Oh, in these uncharted waters, in these horrible trials, in these sticky situations they find themselves in, you are their rock. You support them. You hold them. I pray for every home today. Uh, hold them. Strengthen them. Encourage them to look to you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. He is our rock in uncharted waters. We love you. Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to bear my heart to you a little bit later, 6.30 tonight. You can join me again via Facebook Live. Just going to talk to you a little bit. God bless you, but this is the message of my heart. Encourage you. I pray to encourage you today. Look to him. Trust in him at all times. He is our rock in these uncharted waters. He'll support you in Jesus' name. God bless you and thank you.